Hi everyone, welcome back to the Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination playlist and today we're going to be looking at Seedless Preserves, one of my top 10 colours. I absolutely adore it and I've been so excited to get to this stage with you and be able to show you some gorgeous colour combinations using it. Now the first thing we're going to do as always is swatch this onto white cardstock so you can truly see what it looks like, how it compares to the label and the actual ink pad and then how it compares to other purples and pinks in the range. Now, now, there is a bit of a discussion with this one in my mind is it a pink or is it a purple now it does sit within the purples in the uh, distress range when you look at everything kind of color coordinated but I think it's got a bit of a pink hue to it so what do you put it with let me know in the comments so let's first of all swatch this now everything I'm using which includes the blending mats the brushes um, all the labels and the color chart they are all available uh, linked down below for you I either purchase them from craft stash or as with the downloads you can get those from my blog now I'm going to put this into the middle of this cardstock here because my color combination calls for this to be in the middle and can you see what I mean by it could be a pink it could be a purple I really I never know I just I'm, I'm undecided so I definitely need your help letting me know what you think about this color but isn't it just absolutely beautiful it's stunning so there is seedless preserves now when we take a look at the label it's definitely in my mind a lot brighter than the label is even the darkest solid area in the corner of the label here I think it's definitely much much brighter and much more pink as well so it's a little bit misleading the ink pad's not too dissimilar though so let's now take a look at the rest of the range so i'm going to have my pinks here and then i'm going to skip to the purples now there aren't actually too many purples within the range there we go villainous potion is much darker so we don't need to look at that so as you can see when let's just push these at the top here so when seedless preserve sits amongst the purples it does also sit against what i consider a pink which is victorian velvet so this is seedless preserves just here now let's see about similar colors personally i don't think there's anything similar here but um, I think you'd be looking more towards something like picked raspberry as a similar much paler but again you've got those pink tones if you come over to the purples um, I suppose wilted violet a bright purple but just nowhere near there is nothing else that looks similar to seedless preserves which is actually really good to know because if you're purchasing it you know you're not really going to be doubling up on something that you might already have similar of at home okay so let's get on with this color combination now the first combination i'm going to be doing is what i call tonal so we're going to be sticking within a similar sort of color range but different shades of as much as possible so i'm going to bring in first of all victorian velvet to the bottom of this color strip here so this is going to work so beautifully into seedless preserves which again makes me wonder, is it actually a pink then if it works so well into this pale pink, sort of dusky pink color? Look at that. How stunning is that? Bringing those two together, just going around in small circles. As you work through the Distress Ink and Oxide color combination playlist, you will pick up so many different tips and tricks for your ink blending. So uh, make sure you check out the playlist, find your favorite colors, new combinations for every color. I'm working my way through. Now we're on to Seedless Preserves. We've only got about a quarter of the um, entire range left to do. So that is the Victorian Velvet into Seedless Preserves and then I'm going to go into Dusty Concord at the end. Now Dusky Concord is definitely a purple so we've actually gone from pink to purple here which again goes to show that that's just in between the two. I know that these two blend really nicely together also so let's just work these again small circles. Dusky Concord, sorry Dusty, I always call it Dusky but Dusty Concord is a little more um, on the creamier side it's not quite as bright as seedless preserves is but they just work so nicely together there we go so just working into that blend line using my seedless preserves brush again but what ink is on it i haven't applied any more ink at the moment and just working those circles up like so there we go so there is another lovely combination 
So I think I need to work a little bit more in the center there. We've got some damp patches, so I can either go over with another layer to um, kind of even that out or just wait till it dries. And that's what I tend to do first, wait till it dries and see whether I then need to do any more here, uh, layer any more color on. Chances are once it dries and that dye base soaks into the paper, you usually get a nice flawless look on top anyway. But you can see the colors into each other are just beautiful. So let's do another color combination with this gorgeous Seedless Preserves. Now for this one, I'm going to put Seedless Preserves down first on the end, and then we're going to work our way up through some colors into blues and greens. So there's a lovely amount of Seedless Preserves down on there. Then I'm going to go into Villainous Potion, which is a really deep, dark purple, very, very rich. But again, being a purple, I know that these are going to work nicely into each other. So any purples or pinks, pretty much, you're going to get a really lovely blend. Now, because Villainous Potion is so dark, I don't want to keep blending that way into Seedless Preserves. I'm just kind of overwriting it at the moment. So I'm going to come back with some more loaded on my brush of the Seedless Preserves going to go directly onto that patch and I'm going to work the pink upwards. Let's call it a pink this time because against the purple, it definitely does look pink, doesn't it? I'm going to work that upwards towards the purple in small circles rather than the other way around. And then I'm sure I get a lovely blend, but I'm not bringing any more purple down into that and losing it. So again, now we can see some darker spots there where I've just applied more ink, but that will all even out. Now, because I'm switching to a completely different colour, so I'm now going to be going into a blue because there is blue in purple, so they should blend nicely together. I'm going to wipe my mat clean. So this one is, again, another of my favourites. I'm working with lots of my favourites today. Uncharted Mariner or Uncharted Mariner. So I'm just going to find a sticky mat just to hold my um, strip still. Now, typically I can't find my sticky mat, so I'm, instead I've just folded over a piece of cardstock. I'm just going to hold that still like so, so I'm not actually getting any fingerprints onto my inking. So loading up my Uncharted Mariner, and I'm going to come in to this quarter of the panel. So I tend to, first of all, ink the solid section of the panel, and as you can see, I'm not concentrating on any blend there at all. Let's get this solid color down first. Now in the way of blending this end, I'm just lightening the pressure a little bit. I'll add my fourth color in a moment. Now I'm going to think about blending. So now I'm going to work in small circles, just creeping along the edge there back and forth, gradually moving over it. There's no hurry here whatsoever. There we go. Now, the smaller the circles, the better the blend. If I was to do big circles, I'd be swiping blue ink up into the purple here. That's what we don't want. I'm going to come back with any villainous potion that's left on my brush, and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to start in the solid portion, just to make sure that I'm not putting any solid purple down into the blend, and then I'm slowly going to work my way up into the blue. And I can just keep seesawing between doing these two techniques back and forth, back and forth until I'm happy that the blend is as even as possible. Now, I actually quite like having this strip of cardstock here um, just so that I can almost hide the reveal from you until the very end. So you'll see the reveal with the Seedless Preserves in just a moment. So lastly, for this color combination, I'm going in with Pine Needles. Now, this is a really, really strong green. In fact, I've used all really strong colors here, so it's no surprise, really. Um, I've got Uncharted Mariner just to blend in there. I don't want that green to overpower the blue because I love, love, love the blue. I'd rather the green was just a little bit at the end, if anything. So it actually took no time at all to blend that. You'll see it a bit better. Can you see the shine that we've got on the green? Because that's still drying, it's still damp. Whereas the blue, the purple, and there we go, the pink has all dried. Now, because they're strong colors, I do tend to like really like to spritz them with water. If you give a little spritz with water and then soak that off, that's actually going to give you a really nice contrasting splatter effect. 
it actually works better on the stronger colors than it does the pale colors but if you want tips and tricks like that like i say don't forget to of course subscribe to the channel and also check out the playlist here where all the other colors are